Hi, I am Jaap Age, expressionist painter from the Netherlands. Um, and this is a spot of nature really close to my home. Uh, I started with it maybe two years ago. And in this movie, I will sort of reconstruct the history of this uh, painting. There's still a few little things I need to do. Uh, there's some spot here that I don't really like. And maybe, you know, I will sharpen these weeds a little bit here. And after that, I will be reconstructing how I painted this. Because this painting has gone through a lot of different uh, variations. And I thought, at least for me, it would be fun to reconstruct how that went. And I found some uh, movies, I found some pictures. So I will show you how this came about. I was already mixing the right kind of gray for this, for this water here. And now I'm going to sort of simply remove this little spot here and the other one here. Well, it's very minimal, but that's it. That's what I, you know, Took, really took some time to uh, mix the right color for. Well, maybe now that I have this in my hand, I could make a few more little stripes. This is the reflection of these, of these trees here. Uh, and I remember when I first did this a long, a long time ago, maybe two years ago, um, of course, you know, you understand, of course, that I wasn't working continually on this uh, for two years. Maybe it was standing over there for half a year. I had a photograph with all these, you know, reflections in the water and I painted them in the water. And then suddenly it dawned on me, oh, it changed the whole sky. So now the sky isn't being reflected correctly anymore. So... I went through lots of things like that. So I think this here should be a little bit greener and some of these leaves should be a little bit rounder. So I'll be working on that. I'm using a plastic box that I can close, which has a layer of water uh, at the bottom and then my palette on that. And that way, for you guys who are also painters with acry acrylic, uh, my palette stays workable literally for months. Okay, so I have some green that I still had there. And so I decided to round out some of these leaves here. is fine enough. There we go. This is not covering as well as I had hoped really, but okay. Yeah, well it is better. Put on a, put in a little more paint. I'm sort of laying the acrylic on the background. Yeah, I'm happy here. 
smile. There's always a way to be happier. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's, you know, realistic painting for you. There's always, you can always do more. More and more, it's still not realistic enough. Okay, but I decided this is it. This painting is finished. One, two, three, four, maybe even five, or if you count differently, even ten paintings that are unfinished, but that I also sort of slightly stuck with. So this is a very good example. Well, you know, it's a long, long story how it eventually got to be like this. And now that I'm here, I find it too gray. Maybe that's a strange, strange word to use because there's only a little bit of gray here. But the whole thing is not to do. It doesn't have that power that I like to have. So I decided to make the sky background not yellow or gray but white you know a lot of painters say watch out with white because it really sort of can kill a painting well I hope that this white is gonna kickstart my painting again here so here we go so this is not pure white by the way this is white with a little black and a little blue so there we go try to leave the pink as pink as possible and of course you know here's the trees down here and this whole exercise means i'm gonna have to partly redo these trees, although they were nicely finished. But that's always the thing, you know, if you are doing unplanned things like I'm doing right now, trial and error, if you like, then it all takes a lot longer. Well, I take my comfort from the famous American painter with a Dutch name, they call him the Koning. Well, actually, the Dutch pronunciation is the Koning. But they said about the Koning that, you know, his paintings were never finished, although one or two succeeded in escaping from his studio. I hope this one will escape from my studio soon. Even further in time this is about half a year earlier maybe three quarters of a year uh, the painting has been laying around resting for at least uh, a year or half a year before that and here I've decided to take it up again so um, you can see my in the sped up uh, recording as you can see my head going back and forth all the time because I'm comparing it with the original photograph and I'm noticing all kinds of difference that I'm differences that I'm uh, correcting here um, you can see well the clouds are already pink and purple uh, and they are against a yellow uh, sky here you see even earlier than the other uh, movie. I think we can even see that I am um, filming this with my old iPhone. Uh, and so here I'm working on the pink sky. And here is a snapshot from my studio that I uh, happily found again. Uh, and there we see uh, a gray, a dark gray sky with pure orange uh, clouds and then there's the you know a sundown under that um, a um, you know knowledgeable 
colleague advised me to do it this way. Um, but, you know, it didn't work out so well at all. I sort of lost... It is dramatic, but it is dramatic in a, you know, unconvincing way. So uh, that's why I decided to do away with the grey sky and with the orange clouds and make everything yellow. Now, even further back in time, we are at the very beginning of this painting, when it wasn't even a painting yet, but a photograph. Here you probably recognize the photo. I was on a bike ride with my wife Anneke and some friends, and we passed a certain spot and I got off my bike to make a photograph. And uh, I especially liked the um, bright yellow uh, grain field in the background. Well, you might think, well, it's not that bright. But, you know, I felt it as being bright. And I really liked the water. So I was thinking, well, maybe this is something to paint. And here is my friend Wim Kohl. Wim is an architect and very involved with the whole concept and the whole phenomenon of uh, dikes in the Netherlands. You know, the border between the water and the land, the relationship that people have with dikes, the enormous mass that the dike has under you uh, when you walk on it. So um, at the time, Bim and I were working on a series um, that for me was linked to my home house series. This was a series of um, strong uh, visual works, uh, all depicting some very basic uh, human need, like eating, like children, like the home, like dying, maybe not so much a need, but a very essential human process. And uh, Wim had designed uh, very uh, conceptual dike buildings, like this one, for instance, and that we were now painting together. Uh, those were really sort of strange buildings in the sense that they could never really happen because then the water would flow through the building into the land, and which is not something we want when we build dikes. Altogether, this was a series of uh, 12 works. On the one hand, uh, six important life processes uh, in the form of these strong visual paintings. Uh, and on the other hand, six different renderings uh, of this impossible dike building, which also carried the suggestion that as the water was rising, our relationship with the dike would change. And um, so uh, we thought, or at least I thought, this was an interesting exposition for those cities uh, where the water was rising. Well, the water is rising everywhere, but um, some cities are more threatened than others. But unfortunately, we could not interest any museum uh, that we uh, approached uh, to exhibit our uh, 12 uh, dyke mysticism uh, works. So when we were discussing a next uh, project, um, I talked about this photo uh, and we decided to paint this landscape, only we would limit ourselves to just one small roller and try to do the whole landscape with only the roller. So I took the photograph and I sketched the landscape on a blank canvas uh, and with only uh, a very narrow paint roller we uh, succeeded in making this painting. Um, as you can see, it's sort of interesting and, and it's actually quite expressive, but it's not all that convincing as a landscape. So eventually, uh, Wim was moving to another uh, place and he had to get rid of a lot of stuff. So I took the uh, landscape with me 
Um, I wanted to work on it some more uh, in my own studio and I apparently did because I found this uh, snapshot from my studio where you can see that I've been working on the air. Uh, the clouds, now you saw, so I see some really big uh, uh, purple clouds above the orange. Because what had happened when we were working on it, uh, Wim already uh, found the, the whole painting too dull. Uh, it didn't pop. So I asked him, what do you want to do about this? And so um, he said, well, maybe some more color. So he got the roller and he got the uh, orange paint and he made a big stripe of orange uh, across the sky. So this is uh, how we started with the roller. It's already quite recognizable, really, as the landscape it became eventually. And this is the final result. Um, you can still see a little bit of the orange, I think, uh, where it was originally. But of course, it is all much more detailed uh, than the original one. So this is the whole story uh, of the, this work from the very beginning, through all the different permutations until what it is now. I hope you enjoyed watching this and listening to this. Uh, if you are an artist yourself, uh, I'm very happy to be in touch with you uh, and, you know, exchange ideas, exchange uh, experiences. So uh, do comment. This is um, a request for everybody. Uh, you are uh, who is here right now because you are a very, very select group who watches for, what is it, 17 minutes most people only watch one minute or two minutes or maybe you know 10 minutes as most so if you are still here it tells me that you are quite interested in these subjects that you have some passion for this whole process so please uh, write a comment uh, and when i see it i will be certain to respond to it okay see you next time and we'll paint some more